If you and I both speak the same language, we can communicate. If we don't, we can't. Right? Except consider this documentary where they interviewed someone in the Sea Islands off Georgia. He says ever since radio and TV came to town, our way of speaking just became more and more American. Now we sound like them, they sound like us. Just one problem. This interview has subtitles. Because America, this Gullah speaker, understands you perfectly. But it's not so easy to go the other way. See, sometimes when languages come together, they create this really odd situation where it's easy enough for one person to communicate one way, but it's much harder in reverse. Today, I want to get animated about that, including one time I noticed it myself, and even better, three countries full of people where this kind of asymmetric intelligibility is normal. Do I finally get to use this one? I've been sitting on it for a year. It felt like such a native lang moment. So I'm in the store, standing in line with a hand basket full of what my friend Javier calls my rabbit food. I'm agonizing over whether or not to put back the nuts. They were on the pricey side for what you're paying me these days. Enter a fashionable woman. She glides over to the fancy tea juice potion section. The one that's for the $8 plus crowd, not the $5.99, oh, isn't that a little pricey for nuts crowd? <laughs> Seconds later, I swear out of nowhere, poof. One of the employees is right next to her unboxing stuff. I hear the eagerness in his voice when he asks, You need help finding anything? She turns, and sounds come out of her mouth, but no words. Oh wait, no, she's speaking Italian. Our selfless helper doesn't flinch. He switches from English on the spot. No momentum lost, the two exchange a bit of banter. He shows her down an aisle, and their voices fade into the store. There's something I forgot to mention, though, and it's why the moment stuck with me. When the employee switched, he spoke Spanish. Y español con acento caribeño, which I find quite lovely. Two languages were crossing paths, but in a lopsided way. He was clearly having an easier time helping her than the other way around. Why? Well, we could come up with reasons. He's eager to help. Maybe he's heard Italian before. Maybe he's used to juggling languages. In short, motive and opportunity. But one more factor can come into play in situations like this. The languages themselves. To see how, let's visit a place where this kind of communication happens every day. This frozen looking area at the top of Europe is home to a bunch of languages, plus a ton of dialects. But focus in on the Scandinavian North Germanic languages, Swedish, Norwegian, Danish. For most of us, understanding another language takes study and time, but Scandinavians are lucky. Their languages are close enough that they can go next door and mostly communicate, semi-communication style. It's like a triangle, a beautiful triangle of understanding. This is mutual intelligibility, and it is glorious. But the triangle isn't evenly balanced. I hear it's much harder to semi-communicate in Swedish and Danish than it is in Swedish and Norwegian. And it gets even more unequal in each pair. If you're Danish, Swedish is easier for you than if you're a Swede hearing Danish. So unfair! It's asymmetric intelligibility. Oh, wow, that's a lot of syllables. We could try to boil this down to, like I said before, motive and opportunity. But what if it's not the people, but the languages themselves that are creating Scandinavia's asymmetry? How could we tell? Well, the languages are close enough that their grammar and mostly vocabulary don't change much from tongue to tongue. The big difference is in how they get pronounced. So here's how a Swede says Copenhagen. Schopenhagen. And now here's a Dane. Copenhagen. Smart people decided to measure this difference with the Levenstein distance. Now, I'm not your math teacher or your math channel, but here's the function if you really want to play with it in its recursive glory. I'll honestly be doing the same so we can nerd together. Solidarity. The results estimate what it takes to transform one word into another, so how far apart cognates should sound. Danish cognates should be more distant from Swedish than the way Norwegians say them. Swedish and Danish should be extremes, and Norwegians should settle down right in the middle. One of those authors teamed up for another study hoping to do even better using entropy, 
Again, not your math teacher here. That's my mom's job and she rocks at it. But basically, model the uncertainty Scandinavians feel when they're semi-communicating and guessing at sounds. An example. Danish grammatical endings can only have one vowel in them, but their Swedish cognates can have three. This creates uncertainty for Swedes listening to Danish. So using conditional entropy, just how uncertain is Swedish given Danish? How intelligible is that intelligibility? Well, calculating with a bunch of cognates, it looks like Danish to Swedish should be more complicated, higher conditional entropy, than Swedish to Danish. Swedish and Norwegian are lower, but we expect more of a challenge going from Norwegian to Swedish than the other way. Denmark should understand Norway better than vice versa. Really, Danes should get everyone better than they get the Danes. Danish does have a reputation for being the tricky one. We could do a whole animated tangent on Danish's very evolved sounds, but here, one more time. Copenhagen. Copenhagen. Enough said. So now we have numbers, guessing what intelligibility should be. What happens if we invite real speakers in for a real test? Ask Scandinavians who use one of the languages at home to listen to a reading in another language, then quiz them. How well did they understand? Did high entropy predict low intelligibility? Let's see. Danes have an easier time understanding Swedes than vice versa. Check. Norwegians and Swedes understand each other better. Perfect. Except, wait, why are Norwegian speakers having such an easy time with Danish? I'm reading that right? Yeah. Danish should be hard for Norwegians, but these results make it look like Norwegians understand everything better than everyone. <sighs> why? Well, researchers speculate. I'll have to leave it a mystery this time, but the reasons probably bring us back to motive and opportunity. These three factors make intelligibility happen not just in Scandinavia, but around the world. Written Estonian looks more like Finnish to Finns than written Finnish does to Estonians. Lao and Thai are close, but you Lao speakers out there have a leg up, possibly thanks to Thai soap operas and magazines. Jamaican Patwa speakers understand English, but the reverse is notoriously vexing. And my amazing patrons pointed out Quebec French for Parisians, Romanian for Italians, and Spanish for many kids in the US. So the next time you can't understand someone who understands you, it might be because they're motivated. Maybe they want to help a well-dressed Italian. It could be exposure. They've met your words before, like Gola. But most intriguing of all, it may be because something about your language tilts the odds in their favor. Just because you don't understand someone, it's no guarantee they can't understand you. Thanks to my patrons for voting for this, and for keeping the channel's heart beating and tongue talking. Oh, let me know if you have any asymmetric intelligibility stories of your own. I'm collecting any good ones. And stick around and subscribe for language.